Hey guys, welcome back to episode 84 2.0 because Microsoft <laughs> blows m fucking donkey dick and we can't have a fucking recording save. So yeah, Ron, how you, how you feeling? You have recovered mostly from your T-virus, it looks like. Mostly, yeah. You can see uh, in the background my living quarters is still set up, but... <laughs> Ron mostly comes out at night. Mostly. <laughs> So yeah, uh, if you are just now joining us, we have changed up the format a little bit. Uh, this is still going to be continuing the vodcast format where we have news, but not as much news. And we're going to finish up the episode with the topic of the week. Uh, our topic this week is video game adaptations in the wake of the blazing success of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> so that'll be a fun discussion. But let's start with some fucking movie news, man. And the Han Solo movie is giving me shit I didn't even know I needed to ask for. <laughs> They're just like, because, like, man, Donald Glover's Lando, it's like, ass in the seat. Right. I don't even need anything else. Like, no, 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 motherfucker. Don't Here's waste Khaleesi. More. Here's Khaleesi. <laughs> I was like, okay, and, I don't even know. I, I didn't even know to ask for that, but okay, I'll take it. And if you call in the next five minutes, you get Woody Goddamn Harrelson <laughs> as Han Solo's mentor. In like, you can't even make that up. How it's like that in and in, in of itself makes 2017 better than 2016. Is that Woody <laughs> fucking Harrelson is Han Solo's mentor? Uh, and like we said in 1.0 of this episode, given the character of Han Solo. Like, that is the absolute perfect role for Woody Harrelson. And, dude, Woody Harrelson, like, I, I, I will watch movies that he's in just because he's in them if they're not fucking Star Wars. So I'm so right. excited for this. I am more excited for this than I am any of the actual... Now, I love Force Awakens, uh, but I am more excited for this than any of the actual, like, episode movies. Yeah, I'm... I'm... I, I don't know. It, it It's... Hard to explain, but I'm not necessarily like a huge fan of Star Wars, but I do like the Star Wars movies. But I'm getting pretty stoked for the Han Solo movie. Because, like, man, you think about it, like, the cast is great. The director. The, ca are... the cast alone is enough reason yeah. to watch it. And it's the... got Disney behind it, so you know the effects and everything. Oh, yeah, fantastic. dude. Fantastic. Um, Lord Miller are directing it, Lawrence Kasdan and his kid. Are writing it. Lawrence Kasdan wrote *The Empire Strikes Back*. It's like it's just crazy. The cinematographer, fan favorite. The cinematographer, I believe, is the guy who did *Arrival*. So they're okay. making it. They're gonna make it look grungy. They're gonna make it look, you know, like an actual Han Solo movie. At him, you know, what's actually really cool, and it's one of the things that I like so much about *Rogue One*, is that you're getting Star Wars movies that have dick all to do with the Force or the or the Skywalker walkers and it's cool because like you said like you're more of a fan of the universe than the movies themselves right. you know and what and their storylines so with rogue one and han solo and our, our boba fett now, movie that i'm hoping we get at some point here's a question i've had for you um they did some stuff in rogue one that definitely is not typical of disney and definitely is not typical of the world of star wars in terms of some of the um some of the the more like adult oriented stuff that they did in that movie. Do you think there's gonna be some questionable shit that Han Solo does because make him a little bit more of a complex character? Well, he is supposed to be uh, he is supposed to be more or less a villain when you first meet him. Yeah, he, he does it for when you think about it. Like when we think of you know Han Solo. For the most part, you're thinking of him after A New Hope. For 90% of A New Hope, he's kind of a dick. I mean, he's likable, but he's an asshole. He's only in it for himself for most of the movie. And you can tell when you first meet him that he has a very questionable past. Yeah. Even, though he actually... ends up, even though he ends up a hero, he's got a pretty you know, messed up past. So do you think they're going to have him doing some questionable stuff that some people that didn't really think too much about the character might be like, eh? Now, an angle that I'm glad you brought it up that I think would be really cool if they went this direction is they've scrapped most of the canon from the novels, like all the dozens of Star Wars novels that have happened over the years. But one storyline that was actually really, really cool is his backstory and why he's so good at finagling around and being a smuggler is he was actually originally in the Empire. So mm -hmm. if they did that for the movie, I think that'd be a really, really cool way to open it up, like... It might so maybe he's like a, a deserter? 
maybe the way he meets Chewbacca is he was, you know, a member of the Empire. He was supposed to execute him, and he's like, no, fuck this. He's a cool guy. So I'm going to basically leave the Empire and then take off with Chewie. Or what if it's the other way around? Chewie doesn't kill him for some reason. Yeah. Which, wait, that's another thing they have to show, too. Like, you pointed out, uh, I believe, in 1.0 of this <laughs> mediocre failed podcast, <laughs> thanks to Microsoft. Uh, you wanted to see the card game, you know, like where he wins the Falcon. We need to actually see in this movie, and we probably will, um, how he, uh, you know, gets the life debt from Chewie. Because, you know, yes. Chewie likes him, but originally he's, you know, he stuck with him because he had a life debt to him. So... Um, that's one thing. Um, I actually had a couple of tidbits that were interesting about it, too, that I found in Collider. Christian Bale was originally the choice for the, the role Woody Harrelson got. I found that really, really intriguing. Uh, I like the idea of Harrelson better, but if they were able to talk to Christian Bale, sign that motherfucker up for something, because he needs to be in these movies if he's if he's willing. Yes, and honestly, that's two totally different directions for this character. Woody Harrelson and Christian Bale. I would not have imagined those two were in the running for the same role. Yeah, Woody Harrelson makes a lot more sense. Um, but I would love to see like if you could if you told me like episode nine, Christian Bale is the villain in Star Wars, yes, bitch. Give Dude. me that movie. <laughs> that um, would be that would be pretty fantastic. And the last thing I wanted to say about it, um, uh, Phil, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the directors, they had a pretty funny comment once they were able to announce his official ca uh, casting. They said, we couldn't be more excited to work with an artist with as much depth and range as Woody. His ability to find both humor and pathos, often in the same role, is truly unique. He is also a very good player at ping pong. In true <laughs> Phil Lord and Chris Miller fashion, that quote about sums them up. Yeah. Could not be more excited, dude. Did you have anything else you wanted to add about the Han Solo and Woody Hurls and stuff? Nope. All right, we are moving on along. Uh, earlier we mentioned Khaleesi. While we're talking about some Game of Thrones standouts, how about a little Peter Dinklage potentially in Avengers Infinity War? I saw that, and I think it was within the same second I saw it, I sent you that text. It's like, Jeff. <laughs> Pretty much. That, uh, that was a development that I did not expect. And according to, I think it was Variety I saw it on, um, according to them, I don't know if it was according to Dinklage or just their own, like noticing it, but Game of Thrones, uh, season seven, I almost said series cause I've been talking about so much Dr. Who with someone else. Um, season seven actually changed their filming schedule. If you recall, they wanted to film later. So they have like real snow and, and shit like that happening, real winter weather happening. So they filmed later. Well, that actually opened the door for him to film during Infinity War Part 1 and 2. So Yeah, I, I don't know if they have officially announced this yet, but it, it totally makes sense. Like, the, the guys from Game of Thrones, like, they're getting snatched up all over the place, and why would you not want... Um, here's the question, though. Who do you think he's playing if he does get officially casted? I... And I couldn't figure out who he'd be playing until you brought up your speculation, which I totally 100% agree with. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking it's Modoc. I'm thinking he'll probably be. Uh, they'll probably change the character around a little bit if they win this direction to match him up as one of like Thanos's lieutenants. Yeah, which would make total sense, and he's an easy character to kind of you know switch around his his origins and stuff like that. Because no and one's I gonna feel be... like that's I feel like that's a an enemy or a villain that you can you can tinker with that no yeah. one's gonna be pissed off. Yeah, it's not like you're fucking with Spider Man's origin with when yeah. you're changing up Modok, but it makes a lot of sense. Interesting enough, he was actually talked about um at one point I want to say before they announced that Captain America two was gonna be about the Winter Soldier and Hydra. Um, originally, he was speculated, I want to say, for MODOK back then for a Captain America sequel. Okay. So, to me, it makes a lot more sense to keep him, you know, in the bag and then use him for Infinity War uh, as, as kind of like a lieutenant for Thanos. I don't know what you yeah. think about that. Um, yeah, that that's... It's definitely going to be villain, I get the feeling. Um, but MODOK makes perfect sense. Pairing him up with Thanos... Makes perfect sense. You know, like you said, it's not like you're screwing with Spider-Man's backstory to screw around with MODOK. He's a character yeah. that you're kind of open with. Um, one of the things I hadn't really thought about that was interesting that was in that same article, 
so that he's like at this point either one of the few or one of the only i don't remember new actors to be joining <laughs> the infinity war yeah I was like oh yeah they they already own all of hollywood that may, that's right yeah. i forgot yeah and they like i don't even want to fucking know like how long like to actually watch the mid uh credit sequence infinity war it's gonna take 30 minutes because of the cast list they're gonna have to add in the fucking movie what do you think the casting budget alone for those movies is <sighs> it's like more than i make in a year <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> no. it's gonna be fucking nuts it's gonna be nuts and i want that movie now like really yes. badly i want those this movies is, well man like I, I want to see, because Civil War was already basically Avengers 2. Yes. I want to see what the Russo brothers do with a legitimate Avengers sequel. Because the Civil War was already fucking awesome enough, and now we're actually getting a legit, like... I, they, I, did, uh, they did Winter Soldier too, didn't they? Yeah, they came on for Winter Soldier and um, stayed on for... Because it shows you their, their confidence in them. Their first movie was Winter Soldier, which was a pretty big movie for the landscape of it all. Not only that, like you don't even you can watch Winter Soldier without even being a fan of any comic book heroes or, yeah. or anything. It's not necessarily a superhero movie. It's just an action movie that happens to star a star spangled guy. Yeah, and action espionage. Star yes. fucking Robert Redford. You can yeah. get people to watch the movie just saying Dude, Robert Redford's in it. It's a Marvel movie and you got Robert Redford. Yeah, fundamentally speaking, Winter Soldier might just be like the most fundamentally sound film they've made. There's not a whole lot of flaws you can pinpoint in, in Winter Soldier. I'd um, agree with that. Uh, but yeah, seriously, give us Dinklage. Dinklage is fucking awesome. He'll be he'll be great no matter what role they give him. I hope they give him a cool um like role like Modoc. I think it'd be pretty neat to see. While we're talking about uh, team ups in the MCU. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh god. So I'm scrolling through uh the internet at work today and it what? was either on, it was either on <laughs> Facebook, yeah, because that never <laughs> happens. Um uh, I I at some point saw on I believe it was on Twitter the defenders trending. So I was like, "What?" what? So I pull up the images and oh my god, I had to go to the emergency room after like hour 5. <laughs> I'm just saying did it last longer than four hours? Yeah, I mean, it was just a bit bit longer. So <laughs> I need to quit making that joke in case we get sponsored by Viagra at some point. You know, <laughs> we got to keep our fucking options open. But, dude, the pictures they've released for the Defenders are fucking awesome. Like, that Netflix dude. marketing, man, they're so good. So good. Um I was I've been holding out for another another trailer because we've only I guess a trailer because we've only had the teaser, but dude, those images, and especially the uh, the like the character ones I guess yeah. you call them. They all have a really really cool thing. They're color corrected with their their themed color. It's really yes. cool. Yeah, including Iron Fist, <laughs> which is actually kind of I actually think. Um, I actually think Finn Jones actually did a pretty good job for their photo shoots for those because he doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, you know, like he could because you yeah. haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I was going to say, he's the only one that hasn't established himself to the audience yet, and he looks like he belongs there. Yeah, he looks in that shot of the four of them behind the like the U-Haul type of truck. He yeah. looks like he belongs, and it looks fantastic. Yeah. Because like, like you pointed out, like we had the teaser trailer. The teaser trailer was just the fucking logo and Nirvana, and I'm like, dude... <laughs> I'm ready to go, dude. Like yeah. seriously, take and then that, of... that last shot of all of them. Yeah, and it's really yeah. cool too. They have the graffiti "Public Enemies," and then and that's then like crossed out, and it says "Public but... Defenders." Yes. yes. Oh my god, I want it fucking. Which out. is a double play for um for for Bad <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They can take all my money, which is uh, which is fortunate because my life savings equates to about the eight dollars I pay to Netflix a month. So, <laughs> my eight dollars. You... What, what was the what all was the text bucks. message? What was the text message you sent me? You're gonna make your eight dollars rain all over Netflix's face, neck, and chest. Yep, yep, yep. I can make it rain for about. <laughs> that's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. <laughs> But yeah, if you haven't seen the images, for the love of God, look up. For the, the love of God, go look at them. 
When is Iron Fist? Was it like March 17th or something like that? I believe so. Like uh, it's sometime 18th. in March, I think. I cannot wait. I, I it, don't... It's Iron Fist and then the, then the Defenders. Do we have a, we a date for Defenders? Actually, I think it's going to be Iron Fist and then Punisher. And then Defenders later? And then Defenders. But they, they easily could be flipped because they, they haven't really set hard dates for anything other than Iron Fist, I don't, I don't think. Other than... It makes sense for Punisher to actually come out first because they're already like legit filming Punisher, right? And they yeah. just it seems like they've just now kind of started on Defenders. Twenty seventeen is all it says for Defenders. I want to say it, it's been kind of guesstimated that since they usually have like a fall, like October, September, November around there, I would imagine Defenders isn't going to be out until then. Yeah, um, Punisher also just says 2017. Comic-Con from this year is going to be batshit. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, all right, let's move on. Something else we might actually be, end up seeing at Comic-Con. TWBE Hall of Famer Matt Ryan has returned for Constantine. I'm so yes. excited, Jeff. Now... It's a caveat. Obviously, we would prefer to have him back in a full-length show or at least be a part of one of the bigger shows, but this is a great uh, point in the right direction because... Well, here's the thing. Here's what this does, though. So, it's on CW Seed, which is where you were going. Yeah. And it's, it's animated, animated series. But so was Vixen, and Vixen yes. made an appearance yeah. in Arrow. And now it's not the same Vixen... But Vixen was, at least for this season so far, added to Legends. So it doesn't mean that he might not pop in every once in a while. If give give me a give me the rest of Legends of Tomorrow with Matt Ryan as a lead. Holy shit. Even if it's just one season. Yeah, even I would want it forever, but even if it was just one season, that would be fucking so cool. Shit. He could end up in one of the crossovers. I think it'd be so cool. Like if they brought in, like let's say um, Doctor Fate goes on a rampage, and they have to call on Constantine. Like you could do some cool shit with Constantine on the Legends. And and he's got an in already because he has a history with Arrow, and he has a history of saving Sarah, who is now your captain on Legends of Tomorrow. Makes so he's got lot. he's got two ends to yeah. be in a crossover. Yeah, this is great news. Uh, I will actually be watching this. I don't watch Vixen, but I will be watching this just because I need her. <laughs> I'm hoping they, um... I like how you to throw in the, I don't watch Vixen. I don't watch... Well, now, if it was Vixen from Legends of Tomorrow... Let it be known, I don't watch Vixen. <laughs> make that crystal fucking clear. <laughs> throw... Now, if it was Vixen from Legends, I might be interested, but it's not that Vixen, it's the other Vixen. Yeah. I, I like that Vixen better. Um, especially since they, they had their... So, anime so just so that we're crystal... You don't like Vixen, but you like Vixen. I yes, go Vixen. <laughs> Boo uh, Vixen, yay Vixen. Yeah, Vixen 2020. <laughs> I'm Jeff Miller, and I approve of this message. Uh, yeah, I will be checking it out. I'm really hoping they bring back his bro. I can't fucking remember what his name was in the show, but the immortal guy. I love that yeah. character. I hope they bring him back with that same actor. He was cool. Um, I don't think they're going to be continuing um, any of the plot lines Probably from, not. The, from the show unless he somehow magically got a like an actual full length show. I think if he ever got a full length show back again at some point, you think they might actually at that point con continue like the Zed storyline, you know, with the girl who was the, the female lead. Yeah, it sucks that we didn't see that through, but yeah, I would have liked to see where they, they went with it. It was shaping up to be pretty interesting, but yeah, um, I don't know. What is it? Probably like 22 minutes. It's going to be five or six episodes at 10 minutes long. 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. If, if they could ever get like 22 minute episodes, they could probably do that. Assuming they got the rights to that season also. But now they actually have, they have season one streaming on CWC. That's true. Of Constantine. So they should that should all be cleared since they have streaming rights to it. That's true. Hopefully. So, who knows? Maybe they are 10 minutes at a time continuing it. We don't know. I, I, what I want to see continued, there's three things I like to see continued. First of all, I already said I would like to have his bro back just because he's a cool character. But 
more Spectre because they were leading some cool shit with a Spectre. Oh my God, they were building that. Uh, you know they wanted to do it, Jeff. They yeah, made didn't that you even perfectly tell me? Clear. Didn't even. Uh, I think you told me at one point like uh, it was Matt Ryan and the actor who was the Spectre who kind of talked them into uh, branching the character out more. Not only did they talk him into doing that, but the ending of one of my favorite episodes, they convinced the writers to change. Because oh, really? they had they had an idea for it. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you later if you want me to so we don't spoil anything if someone hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, but. Bro, seriously, if you haven't seen Constantine, I know it got canceled and it's a bummer, but like this it didn't shows deserve you it. this shows you that, that they're bothering to bring it back in this fashion and they're they're, you know, giving him ends. It shows you the quality of the show. Dude, it's up there with Firefly and the what the why the fuck did this get canceled? I mean, do you remember? Do you remember, Jeff? The Twitter campaign and I mean, the actors <laughs> and the the directors and everyone involved trying to get this show picked up and continue somewhere else. I'm like, stunned it didn't happen, at least it on was sci fi months. How the shit sci fi is in house and owned by NBC. How it wasn't passed along to at least sci-fi is beyond me. I think a lot of it was NBC being dicks, to be honest, because they they like they wanted to cancel it and they didn't want to let it go. They wanted to cancel it. And yeah. I don't know if they just didn't want to end up competing with it, but if you feel that way, why are you canceling it? Exactly. So I I don't know. Especially it, when the, it was a cluster. The, especially when NBC is just clamoring with great content. Do you watch any fucking thing in NBC? I don't. I did. I don't now. Yeah, exactly. I can't, Other than the new Wizard of Oz show and um, Grimm, which is about to end, I can't even fucking tell you a single other show that's on their network. Now, I don't even know what late night they have. Is yeah. that Jimmy Fallon? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either. It's no one notable or I'd be able to tell you. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon's yeah. never been notable. So Seriously, if you haven't seen Constantine, check it out and then be on the lookout. I don't think they have a date yet for Constantine, the animated series, but at least during Comic-Con, I bet you they'll probably have at least the first two or three episodes to show at Comic-Con to build buzz for it. Probably, yeah. We might even be getting the first one at Comic-Con since they'll, they'll publicize it, the, the, you know, like the, the people at Comic-Con got to check it out. And then they'll throw out like the first episode, you know. But you can check it out now. Don't forget also Justice League Dark. Yes, which also has Matt Ryan, which comes out I believe in the next couple of weeks on digital. Um, and then I think it's early February if you want to be watching it on like Blu-ray or renting it or anything, um, physical format. But I'm pretty yeah, sure that's wait. what you told me before. Yeah. Cannot freaking wait. Um, but something else that we cannot freaking wait for. Can, can you remember a cooler character announcement than Gus's on Better Call Saul? Dude, that it's was fucking, pretty incredible. It's fucking genius in every sense of the word. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, which I don't know how you're not, but Better Call Saul is obviously the spinoff to Breaking Bad. All you need to know is YouTube Los Poyos Hermanos, and you will get the full fucking load of Gus, and holy shit, dude, it is a great commercial. I don't even want to know how many hours of commercials they studied to have that <laughs> be that perfect of a parody of every commercial you and I saw as a child. Oh my god, it was amazing. Yeah, they knocked that ad out of the park. It's fucking genius. As if I wasn't already, you know, glued opening fucking day for season three of Saul. Like, oh, dude, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. I don't even know what to say. Watch it. Just watch YouTube, it. YouTube, Los Poyos Hermanos. That's all we'll say. It's fucking fantastic, though. Uh, yeah, that's a wrap for TV. We got one little bit of gaming news, and it's a bit of a down note, potentially. Uh... So Ron and I have been pretty forthcoming over the last couple of years we've been doing this, that Platinum Games is one of our favorite gaming companies. One of the few in a landscape of fucking assholes, man. Like, the gaming industry is just cutthroat left and right. They seem to actually be pretty cool guys for the most part. They have a, they have a few blips on the radar where they don't have, you know, like, amazing games. But when they do hit, like, with Transformers Devastation, it's awesome. I yes. don't even like Transformers that much. I mean, I'm sort of kind of... Like, the way you're into Star Wars, that's how I am with Transformers. Like, I'm kind of tangentially on the fringes with it. Like, I'll check it <laughs> out 
for about a half second, it's like you have that sentence backwards, but I, I get what you're saying now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I flip-flopped, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of in the on the fringes with Transformers. Like, I like it, but I'm not a diehard fan with it. And kind of like, love... like me with Star Wars, like you said, you like the idea of Transformers, but you've never seen anything to really execute it. Mostly because it's in Michael Bay raping it in front of our faces for fucking 10 years, it seems like. And, and this is half plug, half recommendation. That's why you need to see Beast Wars. It's very rarely do I condone any of the Transformers secret, like follow-up series or sequel series. Yeah. But, dude, Phil and I have been trying to get you to watch Beast Wars for a reason. Yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty neat just because it actually sounds like... Um, you just like, got to remember what year it came out. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, it's PS1 graphics, basically. I, I know what, yeah, I know what I'm getting to do with that. So, like, Luckily, uh, the graphics aren't like a big... Um, when, once you get used to looking at it, though, the storytelling in it is pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's like so you guys have told me some of the plot lines and it sounded pretty neat. But yeah, the, the new story coming out of them. And by the way, if you, uh, the, the Transformers Devastation game, I don't know if it still is, but I know at one point it was free on PS Plus. So look into that if you haven't played it. If you have that, you know, maybe check it out and see if you can get it for free. But it's worth whatever you pay for it because it was a damn good game. That was a damn good game. But unfortunately, their release slate since then has been pretty rocky. Like you and I, uh, we, we both played and beat the the TMNT the turtle game they made and it was not very good. Now in their defense, they had basically their B team working on it, so it's not going to be as good as what Devastation right. was. But Honestly, it, if that game had been half as long, I think it would have been yeah, a lot better. It overstays its welcome. Yes. What it should have been is if that was going to be the gameplay loop, it should have been like a 3-hour game that you pay 25 bucks for. Yeah. Not a six-hour game you paid 50 for. That was a mistake on their part on their release um, scheduling and everything and pricing. But um, in addition to that, Star Fox, the new Star Fox game did not go over well with a lot of people. Um, did you ever hear from Phil if he liked it or not? He's the only Nintendo guy I really know. Yeah, same here. No, um, I haven't talked to him about it. In fact, I forgot all about that game until you just mentioned it. Yeah, it, it came. It, that's a pretty big get for platinum that's a pretty big nintendo property and it did not go over well it did not sell well and then that leads us to the story um scalebound which was announced e3 2014 they've been in production for at least two and a half years it was canceled as of this last week now to put that in perspective it is devastating to cancel a television show or a movie you can't put into words how devastating it is for a video game to be canceled, especially for that long. Oh, yeah. The amount of resources that go in, like there's a reason video games cost as much as they do, because in order to, to in order to just afford the labor to be able to pay the designers all the hours they put in and the overtime they put in to get these games made and out on time, that's why they get delayed so much. It's and you got to remember too. That particular project is operating in the hole until it's on the shelves and it starts climbing out of the hole. So to be in development for two, two and a half years and, and then they never a, see the light of day, and they, they, had, were just, they were just burning the cash, basically. Yeah, yeah they, they even had a working demo. You and I talked about it on our E3 coverage of this last year. They had a working demo on the floor and uh, with trailers at E3, and for that to be canceled... And it was a pretty, like, I believe they even had some, like, MMO features on it. Like, it was going to be a big game, so it was not cheap. This actually happened right after that Turtle game we mentioned was delisted from Steam, Amazon, Xbox, and the PS Store. That's fucking devastating, too. How That's, often do you hear of that? Yeah, for a property of that magnitude, it's very strange. And I am terrified that Platinum a year from now will not be a thing. I have a feeling someone's going to buy them out is what's going to happen and can and just absorb them. I don't think they'll go completely under. I think they'll just be absorbed. I can see it. Ha it happens all the fucking time in gaming. It's, it's a cutthroat industry, unfortunately. I, I just hope that it's someone that, you know, not the Kanazis or anything like that. I just want it. I want it to be someone halfway decent at least. What, what would be nice is if they were able to find, 
like instead of them getting absorbed by like a Konami, like you pointed out, I hope instead of being absorbed, they find like an equal tier developer and they merge. That'll be a better outcome for them where they'll still yes. have some creative control instead of them just coming in and, you know, hiring, hiring them and absorbing them and then dispersing them into like Konami's separate teams they already have going or something like that. If mm-hmm. they could find like a lower tier, because they're kind of like Platinum's kind of like a B or C list developer. You know, they're obviously no rock star or anything like that. So if they could find like another B or C list company to merge with, maybe get a couple of you know more properties that like you and I have talked about. Like if we could get a Platinum Voltron game, that'd be fucking yeah. badass. There's a lot of properties that work beautifully with Platinum style, and I really hope they don't fully go away because I'll be really sad. Because Day was Devastation, a good game. Devastation, oh my god, was such a good so game. So fun. That game, like you pointed out how like TMNT overstayed its welcome. Devastation perfectly stayed its welcome. Yes. It, you had a great fucking time with it. It never got dull, and they got out the door. Yes. Beautifully done. It was about five, six hours long, but the nature of the property itself, with the, being able to transform and do battle as a car or whatever... You could change up the gameplay style so much yeah. that it never got old, really. Yeah, you and I even played, you know, pretty differently when you would compare like um, some of your videos that you ended up uploading and some of mine. Like it's it's pretty. It was a really really well designed game. It was a lot of fun, and that's coming from someone who, like I said, I'm not even a Transformers junkie. So that show, that's a damn good game. If they got me that into it, I don't even have an investment in their property. That's a that's a really well made game. It would be nice <clears throat> if. Um, if they did get bought out and uh, absorbed, um, like WB Interactive and get like some kind of Justice League or something from those developers, yeah, it just wouldn't be under the Platinum name. That that could be cool. The Platinum, um, I don't know what his official title is, but one of the higher ups, if not the highest up as far as game design, put out this statement saying that it was canceled. The way he was talking sounded like. They weren't going under anytime soon, but you never know. You never know with with gaming companies. It's just weird for such a major... I mean, it was all hands on deck for Scalebound. Yeah, that's one of the reasons... That was uh, their big one. Yeah, one of the reasons Star Fox and Turtles were not very good was because their best people were on Scalebound. Do you think... Do you think it's somehow just related to those two? Maybe they felt like... They used too many mechanics from those two games or something? Like it's well, um what's also not a good sign is it wasn't specifically just platinum canceling it. It came from Microsoft. Because it was a partnership set up with Microsoft because it was gonna be coming out on Xbox One and Microsoft, um on from like you know, like their cross play they're doing with, you know, Windows ten. Yeah. That was like one of their flagships for it because it's rare that you get an Xbox and Microsoft exclusive anymore because the PS4 has eaten the Xbox One's lunch so bad. No one wants that to happen with their games. Right. Unless they're a Halo or a Gears of War that have already been that way, you know, from the get go. So it's disturbing news, and I just hope that they don't go fully under. I, I hope so because that, that would be bad. I want. Do, Devastation ends on a cliffhanger a little bit. I want Devastation 2. Yeah. Transformers, more devastation. If you have <laughs> even more <laughs> devastating. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you knew devastation, but you didn't know dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ron, while we're talking about video game projects going under, how about we transition to that topic of the week and talk about Assassin's Creed and all of the other adaptations that have just gone to shit. <laughs> Good God, dude. We could talk all day about this. What's our time check right now? Um, I forgot to start the timer until God damn it, you did this last time, Ron. No, 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 no. Have... Hold on. Hold on. You have... I started it at Dinklage for Infinity War, and that was 27 okay. minutes ago. Oh, so we're, go- we're doing good. Yes. We're doing good, so we have more time to talk about how fucking Assassin's Creed boned us. <laughs> you bastards. Bastards. Them okay. and Warcraft, the two that we said w- at least one of them can pull it off. Warcraft sure as fuck didn't. Yeah, there's numerous points. I remember us talking about this. We were like, sure. Now, this this is this is hypothetical 2015 in 2016 
Jeff and Ron before we knew that the world was going to end at any point over the next few years. So, um, yeah, on numerous occasions, you and I were both on audio or video record saying, surely one of them's going to work out okay. <laughs> oh, how fucking naive we were. Dude. Now, to be fair, before we continue anymore, neither one of us have actually seen Assassin's Creed yet. Yeah, we are we are not. Now, you can judge Warcraft because you saw Warcraft. Yes. We are judging Assassin's Creed based off its performance critically and commercially and going forward with video game adaptations. We are not talking about the quality of the film. Yeah, you're right. We need to need to say that because I still want to watch it. I, th- I, I think you and I are going to like it. My, if, even all the shit that I have heard about it on the internet and from a guy I used to work with, I still want to see it. I still want to give it give it a shot because I may it may end up being you know a movie I end up putting on my shelf. I don't know. Yeah, uh, a buddy of mine who like you is super into the games. Watched it. He said it was really good. He said it was a, a strong adaptation. You know, uh, I uh, I think what the best thing it had going for it was like you pointed out, and we've talked about multiple times before too how it wasn't just straight up adapting a game why don't See, we start that, off with that's one thing i wanted that to that's one thing that i wanted to include in this vodcast um phil and i i wish he would come on the show sometime but he sure phil and i do it now that video all right um a long time ago we had a discussion about how you know, back then it was we were talking about like Zelda or anything like that. If they wanted to make some kind of movie or adaptation off of a property that large, the only way you could do it and pull it off is to create an original concept based on places or characters, but not story, and let the video game developers make the movie based game. Don't take a game and throw it on the silver screen because the difference in a 60 hour game or even like a 30 or 40 hour game versus a two even, hour movie even a 12 hour game yeah even the versus, shorter games do not translate that way yeah most of you, the time you just can't do it they're way too dense so we always said what you would need to do is just write an original story take the concept make an original story put it on screen don't worry about the game the game will follow and Assassin's Creed looked like that's what it was doing. The games have never been to the Spanish Inquisition. They've never been to that time period. That Nobody never expects the Spanish Inquisition. Sorry, I can tell myself. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've been waiting for that, haven't you? Oh, uh, yeah, I was waiting to pounce on that shit, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. really quickly, I did want to point out the current box office tally of Assassin's Creed that you and I had alluded to, just how fucking commercially disastrous this has been. Assassin's Creed has been out 22 days. Their production budget before marketing. Crucial. (laughs) (laughs) Production budget before marketing. 125 million. We can guesstimate they spent at least 100 million because god damn it they had to have Kanye paid Twice. and on their fucking trailers. So let's guesstimate a 225 million for the budget being nice and lowballing the estimate. After 3 weeks worldwide 155 million take. Hashtag #boned That is devastating. It did worse than Warcraft. And it's probably a billion times better movie than Warcraft is. And I think there's a few reasons for that. Because the, what I have heard about the movie, I haven't really heard anything bad. I've heard some stuff. The worst um, I heard was that it was boring. Which see, I find kind of hard to believe. The reason that I, I'd heard that same thing and the reason for it I could see it being boring if what I've heard is true. I don't know how much we want to say still since it's only been out three weeks or whatever. And I haven't. Yeah, I, I've I've actually I stay away from reviews specifically because I don't like to have my opinion warped. Yeah. So, but if what I've heard about it is true, I could see it going boring, which is a shame. But I feel like this has a lot to do with not just video game 
movies, period. But I feel like it should have come out before Warcraft. I think Warcraft heard it. Well, okay. Not only that, but out of all times of the year, let's release it within 10 days of Star Wars Rogue One. What? (laughs) There are how many weeks in a year, Ron? 52. Pick fucking any of them but (laughs) that one. Good God. Because seriously... It what is... did I tell you? What What did I ask you if they had waited a week and you said there was nothing? It, it, well, no. What well, you and I talked about, they needed to get into January. Yes. They could fucking mop the floor with Resident Evil 25 and Underworld 12 <laughs> with the other video game movies. Hint, hint. You want to know how Resident Evil and Underworld... I know Underworld's not a video game movie, but it's kind of like a video game movie. Like you can it kind of feels buy it. like, yeah. It feels like it. The reason Resident Evil has 25 films is because they don't go up against Star Wars Rogue <laughs> One, guys. <laughs> yeah. And you don't need a fucking marketing degree to, like, huh, <laughs> let's go up against Star Wars because that works out for fucking everyone. Right. I, I, just, I mean... I know, you and I used to work in a movie theater, and Christmas Day was the busiest day out of the year, which is still shocking to me. And that entire season is, like, the busiest season besides, like, you know, summer blockbusters that we have. So I understand why they wanted in that time frame. But what they needed to understand was that with the demographic they're going for, they can release that movie any time. It does, it's not a particular time of the year that they need to grab their market. They could release that movie any time. Anyone that's ever played a video game is probably going to go see that. Anyone who has seen Michael Fassbender or Jeremy Irons around is probably going to go see that. I mean, anyone you, who saw the trailer might go see that. Do you think they thought they had a bigger product than they really did? Because Assassin's Creed is one of the top five best-selling, probably, video game franchises right now. It's also, of the modern era of video games, one of the most recognizable franchises as well. But that doesn't necessarily translate to box office dollars in the way... That like a, a Halo movie would. Well, even then, I think it honestly, I think it wouldn't matter how good this movie is, because we have been boned so many times on video game movies that I think I think what is going to end up turning that around is not going to be a theatrical release. I think it's going to be a something. TV show? No, I think what it'll be is something that gathers a cult following later. So, like, say, Assassin's Creed is the best movie ever made, but no one's going to go see it. And then once it hits Netflix and everything and people start liking it, I think, you know, not necessarily Assassin's Creed, but just to throw a title out there, I think it's going to be something like that that starts turning this trend around. I think at this rate, Hollywood has foobarred so many of these video, because like let's 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 talk Warcraft and Assassin's Creed, and they're both failures, but in different ways. We can't speak for Assassin's Creed, but we can speak for Warcraft because you've seen it, and I believe you, and I believe everyone else that said it was dog <laughs> shit. But Warcraft was foobarred from the get go as far as the fundamentals of the film. It sounded yes. like it was just a bad movie. Pretty much. I don't think Assassin's Creed was necessarily a bad movie, but Hollywood fucked it in the ass by releasing it against what it did and when it did. And I think what gets what gets video game adaptations <laughs> going, honestly, at this rate, I have more faith in everyone in Hollywood doing TV more than I do movies. I yeah. think it's going to take a video game TV show of, like, the one we always throw out 
give me a Netflix original Witcher show. Yes. Something like that is going to have to hit big enough to where you're going to have to have Hollywood realize if we just get out of our own way and make them good the way that because the, the, the easy comparison is comic book films. It is the exact same thing. This is the exact same thing that needs to happen that happened in comic book films. They need to realize that if we just put extra attention to making sure they're fucking good, people will come in droves to watch it. How much fucking money did Captain America 3 make this last year? Yeah. 12 years ago, no one could even fucking tell you who, what Captain uh, what uh, Captain America's real name was. And now it is one of the biggest draws of the year because when Batman Begins and Iron Man rolled around, they took them seriously. Yes. Iron Man blew everyone's brains when that movie came out. That's a nearly flawless movie. Yeah. I, I think ba- I think Batman Begins, which happened first, is a nearly flawless movie, too, other than some cinematography. I, I would agree. And what is more mind-blowing about Iron Man to me, though, is I was already a Batman fan. True. Good point. I didn't, I didn't give two shits about True. Iron Man. Anyone that says they did is full of shit. Because <laughs> I have a goddamn comic reader. I've never read an Iron Man comic in my life. <laughs> it's uh, okay. So I don't know if Assassin's Creed did this or not because I haven't seen the movie. Warcraft's mistake, in my opinion, I'd be interested to see if my you buddy can spoil Bobby. Away. No one, I don't care. No one's gonna care. <laughs> um, my buddy Bobby's probably gonna agree with me. It was written for hardcore Warcraft fans who know the lore the way you and I know Dark Souls lore. And Dark Souls? <laughs> Dark, Dark Souls? Dark Souls? Um, the, it's weird being able to actually emote. Yeah, um, and then actually remember people that are watching us. Right. Um, that was a mistake. Because what they needed to do, and this is actually... I can't believe I'm going to fucking say this. Uh One of the smart things that the first Transformers movie did was it was written for general audience who knows fuck all about Transformers. They they even changed the background of the Transformers for that movie. You know, they changed what the war was about. They changed fundamental things and made it accessible. Iron Man was completely accessible no matter what your background is. Yeah. And Warcraft, I know some Warcraft lore. I have Warcraft books on my shelf. I've played World of Warcraft. I've played Warcraft. And half the time, I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. So it was that dense that even you couldn't f- it follow was what was so, happening? It was so dense, I had no idea what the fuck was happening. It is so just like, what were you guys thinking? And here's the thing. like Resident Evil and Silent Hill and the things that they do... Those movies, to me, have a better idea of what, like, they know, they get their audience. They have a better idea of what their audience wants from them, but they're not like huge, triple A, big budget, big studio movies. So they don't really reach as many people as they would, as, like, say, Assassin's Creed thought they were going to. But. They they get their audience, you know, and yeah, those are two very simple games and to, that is to, easy to adapt. To your uh, uh, credit and point too, how you said earlier, the best thing you have to do is make it its own thing. That's not a direct adaptation. They did that with the first Resident Evil. Mia Jovovich isn't in any of the games. She was an original character, and she's yes. still kicking like nine movies later. Like that's one of the reasons why. Yeah. They were able to make original stuff with it. They're not all good, but at least it is original. They're not having to be slavish to a certain it, thing. While they might not always be good movies, they're a fun watch. Usually you're yeah, at least you, happy you watched it once. Yeah, you, you're getting what you paid for and what you expected out of it. It's and, and with The, the reason Seth, is they get their audience. They get what you're wanting from that movie when you step foot into the theater. Yeah. Um, like well, one of the ones... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of how I can transition this. Let's let's start talking about what we might think be the like the the, the not the straw that breaks the camel's back, but like what finally gets us over the hump. I want to say is like actually get these things rolling. Um, honestly, right now, as far as what is in production, 
the Tomb Raider movie might be really make or break of the next decade. I think what Tomb Raider has going for it is something that the other video game properties didn't. And that is there's already been two big budget, fairly successful movies with big name actors in them. It's yeah. already a, 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 a people that don't even play video games know Tomb Raider because they've heard of the movies. Didn't you so, say what was was it number one of the highest grossing adaptations? I think you looked at it earlier. Yeah, um, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, which I believe was the first one. Um, Box Office Mojo has a video game adaptation category is the number one. Okay. That was in 2001. It came out. Um, Angry Birds. Fucking Angry Birds is number two. Um, another one that we forgot to mention, by the way, Prince of Persia. They have listed as number three all time. I still need to see that. I have not seen that. They knew exactly what their audience wanted, and that I wouldn't even if I didn't know it was a video game movie. You just like it? I just like it. I don't care that it's based on a video game or not. I just liked that movie. The reason that one made money too is they were smart about when it was released. I want to say that was like a summer movie. That was not yeah. you know re- released. Um, May twenty eighth. Yeah. And Ben Kingsley, Jake Gyllenhaal, like it had a good cast in it. And you know what's interesting too is just talking about it really quickly. A quick aside on the box office standpoint. Alfred Molina. That was the other one I couldn't think of that was in it. Oh, Alfred Molina. Yeah. Uh, Doc Ock. Yep. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing too. We talked to, for a couple seconds earlier about December movies versus summer movies. The, the I think the way they looked at Assassin's Creed. <laughs> And here's the thing. In December, it is a really, really big draw overall for the box office. But when you have the summer, even if there's more movies in competition with it in the summertime, people have more times they're going to be going to the theater, period, during the summertime than they do during the holidays. Because the thing with most movies during the holidays around December is... How many times during the month do you think people are going to be going to the theater with either, you know, like with their families and stuff like that? Usually one time, right? Right. So that's one of the reasons Avatar made as much money as it did. It was the only movie out, and people only went, you know, usually to go see that one movie. So if you're going to be going one time in December, are you going to go see Star Wars or are you going to go see Assassin's Creed? Yeah. If you put it out during the summertime, you can go watch one movie one weekend. And then the next weekend, say, hey, I'm bored. Let's go watch Prince of Persia. And that's what gets it in the top five. It's like, yeah. I don't understand. It's so simple, yet Hollywood, it's it, they, they can't help but shoot themselves in the foot over and over and over and over again. Another interesting point, by the way, very few of the video game movies in this list are in November, December. Um... Street Fighter is one of them that was in December. The Van Damme one? Yeah. Holy shit. But, but very, very few of them That's were one of the in... top ten? No, it's not in the top ten. Oh, okay. I was going to say, that's pretty sad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I had no idea, by the way, there was a House of the Dead movie. But... It was probably terrible. <laughs> probably a good thing you didn't know it existed. But yeah, um, what gets us over the hump, I think, is going to be a movie that basically gets the Batman Begins or Iron Man treatment where they just make a good movie, you know? Just Poor it crap. just happens it just happens to be set in this concept with these characters. Yeah. And it's just a good movie. Guardians of the Galaxy even level fun yeah. movie. And what's going to happen, I think when that movie comes out, it's going to be a miss at theaters. And people are going to Redbox it, people are going to Netflix it, people are going to Amazon Prime it, and it'll pick up Steam, and people will notice that. It's either going to be that or something like a Netflix Witcher show with Jerome Flynn and Jason Isaacs, or you know something like that. They, if, it's going the, if, it, if it goes the TV show route, what really needs to have happen is it needs to be like a phenomenon. Yes. It needs to be like a Game of Thrones, which I think Witcher could be in the right hands. It's a great property. But with with movies, I I don't think I don't think it just uh, let me okay let me rephrase it this way. At this point, we have been burned so many times, 
and these studios have been burned so many times, literally, you know, wasting money. I don't think that's good enough if it's just good and it does better later. I think we have to have one at this rate since they fucked it up so hard so many times. I think we need to have one that is critically and commercially successful at the same time. I think we need to have Tomb Raider come out and it be 80% on Rotten Tomatoes and make $75 million opening weekend. And if anything is going to do that, it'll be that. There I say it is going to be Tomb Raider. And one of the reasons for that is, like you and I have pointed out many times in our Let's Plays and many times in our podcast and now vodcast, um, it is basically a 20-hour movie. You know, like it. Yeah. It, it's it's a linear progression. It's a it's a story that progresses, and it only progresses one way, and it's scripted. And all you need to fucking do is have a smart cast. You Which know, it they do. Be, it doesn't have to be huge names. It just has to be smartly cast. Exactly. Looks like Tomb Raider. Yes. Vikander and Goggins is very smart casting. And you just need to find a script that works in that game, even if it's not the same story as that game, which you could do and get away with. There's a lot yeah. that can be cut out. There's there's three but, there's three that are complete layups, which we shouldn't even be having this conversation now because one of them should have already hit big if they would just fucking get off their ass. Tomb Raider, the new game of Tomb Raider, like you said, is a 20-hour movie basically, but there's enough there you could trim that down to a badass hour and 45 minute movie easily. Uncharted, the exact same thing. It's a 20 hour movie that has great characters and you could trim that down to an hour and 45 minute great fucking movie and Last of Us. You could do the exact same thing. Anything Naughty Dog has done could be made into a great movie because they're cool characters for the most part and they're action adventure. You know, like I I know Last of Us is a little darker, but it is something that you could make into a PG-13 movie. Oh, yeah. And they're just sitting there, and they can't even get them off the fucking ground. And that's why I think Tomb Raider has a shot. Um, that and the yeah, fact that... Yeah, at least that, Tomb Raider seems to be fucking happening, period. And the fact that there's been two movies yeah. prior. Helps Pro- you're probably right. The reason Tomb Raider is even happening is because of the, the Angelina Jolie movies. It's because they have some form of track record with it. Yes, and, you know, they were fairly successful. You know, say what you will about them, whether you liked them, whether you hated them, whatever. They were fairly successful, and audiences saw them. Yeah. Audiences, whether they play video games or not, know Tomb Raider. So, I think Tomb Raider has a shot at it, but I think whatever actually, truly, probably does it is going to be a cult following and miss at theaters is probably what's going to happen. I, I just I think I think all and Hollywood, I think that simply because like you said we've been burned so many times now. That, by that's studios. that's to me I don't think a cult following is good enough. I think Hollywood has been burned so many times they have to see dollar bills like yeah. from the box office opening weekend. Because like, let me ask you this right now, Assassin's Creed. If it's I know it's it's not on, like on Rotten Tomatoes on a very very like high rating or anything, but. If Assassin's Creed does killer on on like um, Redbox and streaming, I don't think it matters. I think it's already considered a failure at that point. I don't think a cult following is is gonna wake up Hollywood to realize what they have. Because like when you think about it, like Iron Man killed at the box office and started up the whole MCU. But if Iron Man is a great fucking movie, if Iron Man is the exact same movie that it is and is beloved after the fact if it doesn't make the money it did opening weekend have like an all-time great opening weekend like top five or ten whatever it was i don't think you have an mcu i don't i don't think in this day and age i think hollywood is too stupid and too money hungry that they see dollar bills before they see quality and i agree with that but i think that it would be a slow transition but i think eventually some script writer, some filmmaker somewhere would watch whatever it is that had that cult following and be inspired to do something. So so basically you're lines. saying you're saying that's the stepping stone, not necessarily like what yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, Someone else will come along and emulate it. 
It's just a, it's just a fucking shame. Like this, we we talk about this so much because it is a fucking shame. Because a lot of the video games you play now are just flat out better than what Hollywood is producing. Uh, it, it honestly, I think the easiest way to sum it up is most video game movies. I think just try too fucking hard. Just make a good movie and cast it smart. And uh, don't have Kanye over your trailers. That helps and, too. And and I know. I know it's kind of a cheap shot saying just make a good movie because, I mean, that's not exactly easy either. But we're not asking for the game on screen. We know that's not possible. Yeah, you know? and we're, we're also not asking for Martin Scorsese to be directing it either. Just make a yeah. decent movie. It doesn't have to be like an Oscar winner. Just make a decent movie. And yeah. that's honestly, that's part of the problem, too. One of the reasons TV has become the juggernaut in the industry is because Breaking Bads and Better Call Sauls and Game of Thrones and all of this happens because they're doing what we're talking about. When you hear Benioff and Weiss talking about Game of Thrones, they are talking about the quality and the plot and the characters. When you hear a Hollywood executive talk about it, they are talking dollar bills and properties yeah. And they're throwing fucking Kanye West on Assassin's Creed because they think that's what is pro- a good profit, you know, decision, yeah. not what's better for the property. And I'm really pessimistic about movies in general, honestly. Dude, and because if you once don't we get think... done with comic book movies, I think we're fucked for like 10 years. Probably. It's going to revert back to like the 90s. It's going to be fucking um, garbage for a long time at one point. If you don't think the music alone on a movie trailer makes a fucking difference then you need to YouTube the Assassin's Creed trailer and then YouTube yeah. it fixed. Because someone took the uh, the Revelations music from that trailer and imposed it over the movie. And yeah, it, it's an entirely different trailer even though it's the same visuals. You, um, you Earlier you mentioned too, I think a great place to drop one of these movies where it has a, it has a prayer is Netflix. Because with Spectral, I don't know if you're aware of this, Spectral was actually originally owned by Universal, and it was going to be going to theaters. Really? Universal decided to kind of can it at the 11th hour, like Scalebound style. Netflix bought it up and threw it up on Netflix, and it's been a decent you know, success for Netflix because they work in kind of different landscapes. I think I think that movie would not have done anything exactly. uh, in theaters. That is uh, I know movie. another movie, a, a, a movie that is a perfect example of that, I think, is Lockout. Yeah, it's something similar. Um, it, it's because... kind of similar. It, it, it's not you know, the, at all a similar movie plot-wise, but those movies feel kind of the same. And I think if that had been on Netflix, Lockout would have been... Yeah, a much more popular movie because it's it's super it's super important that when you just pull up a movie on Netflix like we did with Spectral when we watched it over the last few days, or you go out of your house and you go to the theater and you pay ten dollars for your ticket, and if you want popcorn, you pay eight dollars for your popcorn. You have expectations built into what you're watching. Yes. If I had to sit on my fucking couch and watch Spectral, my expectations are not nearly as high, and I don't demand as much from my content. Not only it, that, it I mean your perception. If it sucks, you're like, eh. Like, yeah. what did I expect? But when it's good, like Spectral, <laughs> it kind of blows you away a little bit. Yeah. That I think Netflix or Hulu are great plat or Amazon Prime. I think those are great platforms to draw. I would never call Hulu great. That's true. <laughs> Hulu is a decent option. Netflix is a great option or Amazon Prime. Of dropping one of these. You're never gonna get a Halo movie on, you know, Netflix. I don't think, but I think you might at some point get like an Uncharted project or a Witcher project, and that's all you need. You just need and one fucking thing. You know what could be even better? Um, something that Netflix has to offer that a movie can't is one thing that's been very popular trend right now is like an eight-part miniseries. Yes, fuck it. So you can have. Instead of two hours to flesh something out, you can have eight hours to flesh exactly. something That's out. a good point, too. That's a good middle ground to reach between um, uh, and a, and a full-length TV series and a movie. That's a good middle ground. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that's uh, a good route to go. Because, like, Spectral, I told you after I watched it, to me, Spectral 
is one of the best video game adaptations I've seen that wasn't actually a fucking video game because it felt like I was watching a video game correctly brought to life. You know what is another good example of that, though, of exactly what we're talking about? It's not a video game. It became one later, and that game fucking sucked, by the way. But it was a movie first, and then it, and now it has its own comic line and everything. Pacific Rim. Yes, that's a good point, too. Pacific Rim, I don't care what you say about the plot. It's Guardians of the Galaxy level fun movie. Anyone that I know that hasn't seen it or the ones that shit on it, anyone I know that has seen it has loved it. It's like, fuck yes. Like, it's the Godzilla movie and the video game movie that I deserve and never got. <laughs> and the one we need right now. <laughs> and the one we need right now. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to watch it. It, it. it was fairly successful. I mean, they did what they expected to do, I think, in theaters. They casted smart. I mean, I thought everybody was well cast in there. And yep. they knew they knew where to put their budget. Yeah. And they um, knew what their audience expected. Most of the screen time yeah. is robots versus monsters. Yeah. Godzilla. <laughs> fucking assholes. We have mentioned Avatar and Godzilla. What is fucking wrong with us? We've mentioned both of those in this podcast. Those are no-no words. James Cameron, run. James Cameron, run. Yeah, really quickly... I think one of the best properties to get the ball rolling is Dead Space. Because Dead Space is horror action. Dead Space. You have, a, Dead Space. You have a new Alien movie coming out. It's, you know, kind of a curtail off that one. Yeah. It's like, imagine this. Imagine an eight-episode miniseries on Netflix of Dead Space directed by either, like, James Wan or Del Toro. Like, something like that would be, I think, would be killer. James Wan directing Del Toro on Creature Design. And, yeah, and as a producer. And as a oh, producer. Shit. Executive you producer. Get fucking pro no goddamn CGI bullshit. Give me prosthetic effects for the necromorphs, and you could have some really cool shit going down on that. And oh. Hollywood, I know what you're a fan of. If it's successful, there's like three or four games that you can then convert and have it franchise, franchise, franchise. And you want to know of uh, my dream Dead Space project, who'd be the showrunner and director? The guy who did fucking Hard Home. Get that guy, dude. That guy needs to be running a show. Because between yes. that and Battle of the Bastards, that guy deserves a fucking TV show. And the best zombie movie I've ever seen is Hard Home. So give him <laughs> fucking Necromorphs. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yes, I 100% uh, agree. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add with it? With the video game? I think we kind of you know, I mean, beat we all... We could go all day, but I don't know that we yeah. could do it without starting to talk in circles. Yeah, I, th I think we, we, we touched upon pretty much everything we feel. But it's an ongoing problem, so we'll be ta probably talking about it as soon as next week when they piss us off with another Kanye trailer or something. <laughs> Super Mario World with fucking Kanye. It will, be interesting. it will be an interesting episode when one of us finally sees Assassin's Creed yeah, and comes back to, with our thoughts. We need to watch it together. And then do like a little review for it because we've talked about it so fucking much. I think we should do that just to kind of break it down and kind of this be it'd be like an addendum to this. Yeah, is when we actually see Assassin's Creed. But yeah, if you want to check us out more, please like and subscribe. That gets you all of our content. We've obviously you know started the vodcast back up. We're hoping to get Let's Plays back and rolling pretty soon. Um, Ron has been sick for the last few days. That's why we got kind of delayed with that. Um, but we're hoping to get back and do uh, the swing of things. Social media links for Facebook and Twitter are in the description below if you'd like to follow us there. I promise you we don't spam it with anything like a lot of providers yeah. do. Um, so, yeah, please check us out on there. And most importantly, if you know anyone else that might enjoy our content, which, um, I mean, if you do, you're kind of a masochist, so I, I kind of feel bad for suggesting this, but share us out to your friends. Uh, we are available in all dimensions now. You get to see our <laughs> ugly mugs for an hour each week, so... Well, smell of vision coming next year. I should go work for Hollywood. My marketing's about as good. I mean, shit, <laughs> hire me, somebody. So, yeah. no, 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 no. It's not complete until we overlay a Kanye song. Can you actually do that? Can we? We I need. Could. We need. To, we, we probably. We should end the episode with fucking Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jeff. I'm Ron. And this episode has been brought to you via Kanye West. <laughs>